Uh, but welcome everybody. I know if you've been attending a couple of Teams Nation sessions, which I hope you all have, you are well into your day. We're just uh, slowly getting the sun to come up here, uh, but very much very excited to be here in the morning, my time, but also joining everybody throughout the world. Hopefully uh, where you're joining in from, you're already having a great day, both with Teams Nation, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. Um, for the next 40 minutes, we're going to dive into how Microsoft Lists and Microsoft Teams blend together. But I first wanted to just give that shout out to the Teams Nation team. Uh, I know they had a great kickoff with Jeff. I know some of my peers that are presenting today. I know a lot of the community MVP folks that are presenting. So I wanted to thank the uh, everybody who's putting on Teams Nation, everybody who presented, and just an honor for me to be amongst the all these faces and to be within this community is always a pleasure. So um, never hurts to say that. And uh, it's truly one of those things I feel for Teams Nation. So you know where you're at already. You're at Teams Nation, just having fun with Teams to present it and use some of their cool graphics, including the new Wave. If you haven't seen this one, this is one of those uh, things that's coming to Teams soon that they announced so that we can all react to each other and share what we like, what we don't like. But this is one of those where if you want to be within the network, uh, you know, joining everybody in some moment, uh, the Wave with emojis is, is going to be exciting. But let's get into the meat of it. Um, I just cheated here and copy pasted and just to kind of reiterate where you're at. This is all about preparing for an event. And uh, in my role, oftentimes I'm the one that's supporting a lot of people going to things like Ignite or the MVP Summit or attending and supporting a lot of different presentations for Microsoft at the Microsoft 365 conference. We did a little bit here for Microsoft or for the Teams Nation. Um, but it really is all about whether it's an internal or an external uh, event. It could just be a one day event. It could be a multi day event or it could be a campaign of sorts. Really, the intent is to show you how you can track the information and collaborate with other people as you're working on creating the event, creating the content for the event, prepping, prepping to talk about the event and make it public, whether that's public internally, you know, via something like a SharePoint news or a newsletter or publicly where you're posting and blogging and social tweeting and all that good stuff. Um, it's really focused on prep about the content, prep with the speakers, and then some of those nuances of just getting the word out there. Um, but you'll see a lot around Microsoft Lists. Obviously, you'll see a lot around Microsoft Teams, and it's really how they come together. There's that integrated experience now with the Lists app in Teams. So uh, if you if you didn't know where you're at or if you weren't intending on coming to room 10 to hear about this, you have time now to hop to another one. I take no uh, shame if that's something where there's another session that you wanted to go to, but this is what we're focused on and we will absolutely dive into it. Just a quick 101 of who I am. I created a single item list in a gallery view to share who Mark Cashman is. So besides this guy talking to you right now, I'm a senior product manager here at Microsoft. I focus on Microsoft Lists, the integration in Teams. That's including what we do with SharePoint. So the role of SharePoint in collaboration across Microsoft 365, I also focus on that. I also uh, manage our events, like I mentioned, which is what I'll be talking about today. And I do uh, some personal blogging over on what I call the cash box. And I have a podcast at Microsoft called The IntraZone. Uh, that's a little bit about me. If you like what it is that I'm saying and sharing here, uh, I am pretty active on Twitter. Uh, it doesn't always require a follow, but if you go and check it out, I usually you know, post about the different events, post about the different releases, uh, and certainly with this, um, I'll, I'll make a little bit of noise about uh, what we did here today. So that's who I am, and just around the agenda is now more than one item, but also using a list, and this is also in gallery view. I thought we'd spend a little time on just clarity around what is Microsoft List. You'll see that in action. I'm going to also focus on a little bit around what is Microsoft Teams, but mostly uh, just reiterating what you've already heard. So I'll be a little bit more short on this one. And then we'll get into the meat of it using the event itinerary. It's a special template that we have within Microsoft Lists that helps you jumpstart. But then I'm going to show you how not to use the event itinerary list because once you do it once, and if you refine it on how you like to use it, then I'll show you how you can use it again. That's in the reuse uh, section. But we'll get into once you have your list going to draw people into the list, to ask people different questions like what's your final title? Who's gonna be your co-presenter? All those kinds of things and how you can collaborate on the list, but within the conversation right next to the list. 
when it gets to the point where you're getting ready to get to the event, uh, we do something here at Microsoft that I think is also probably pretty common for other companies and other organizations where we create a no before you go. And that is really usually a meeting, a PowerPoint, and a list of sessions. And I'll show you how I do that on a SharePoint page that I think just helps wrap it up inside of Teams for everybody who's attending that you're supporting uh, or you're working with. And then make some noise, that's the fun part. Uh, if it's external, I'll show you one example. If it's internal, I'll show you another example. Of course, there's a million ways to make noise about what you have been working hard on, just like the Teams team has been tweeting and posting and you know reaching out to everybody to then go to their own networks. Um, there's a lot, of course, that you can do with that. The reuse part, though, I'll save that and see if you can guess ahead about what I'm going to show there. But it basically is, like I said, taking that jump from using a template to then using something that's a little bit more customized by you. So if that's uh, approachable for you all, I'm going to jump in and kind of combine the what is Microsoft lists by starting to actually use the product. And we'll go in to create a new tab. And if you're in Teams on any channel, this is not a special thing that Mark has. This is now fully released to everybody. It's also released across any of the different uh, offerings that we have, whether you're a small business, an enterprise, whether you're an education customer or a government customer. In Teams, you have what we call the Lists app in Teams. For me, it shows pretty front and center because I use it a lot. And of course, I just recently used it. But like any other tab app, if you can't find it, just go into the search box, type in lists, and it'll bubble up. Once you start using it, it'll be within your list of recents. But if you can't find it, you can always type in lists, crack into it, and it'll start you through the process of effectively creating a new list. If you've done this from Microsoft List, which is its own app in Microsoft 365, the only thing that looks a little bit different are two things that I'll call out. But really, to the end user, what I'm starting to do is build a list for this team of people right as a tab in this channel. And I can go in and I can pull in an existing tab, existing list, and I'll show you how I did that for these two other events. But for now, just to kind of learn what is Microsoft Lists in the context of Teams, uh, I'm going to go in and create a new list. Just to walk you through here, and then we'll really dive into the template du jour. It's the event itinerary template. When you create a list, the big thing that you might not have seen, which is kind of the trivia question number one, if anybody wants to just play along in chat, the one thing that I didn't do when I create a list in Teams that I have to do when I create a list outside of Teams, whether I create it from SharePoint, whether I create it on the mobile app, or if I create it from the list home experience, if I go through the create list experience, I would give it a name, I would do some things, but look for the one thing that I don't have to do once I start to create it. Um, but to orient you where we're at is we're in the process of creating a list. I can do that from blank, which means I start with one column, the title, of which I can rename, add a bunch of columns, rearrange them, and do pretty much whatever I want. And I do that a lot for those lists that just I only need to collect a few things. I can also bring in information from Excel, so you can have an Excel spreadsheet, make sure it has a table delineated in it. Then when you import it, it'll ask you which table do you want to import. Once you point it to the right table, you import it. It'll guess at what your columns are. You can change the column type before you import. It's a really nice, great tool to import data, especially if somebody got started in an Excel list. But for your event, it's easier, or maybe you're convinced after today that it'll be better with lists in Teams. So the nice thing is you can always export to Excel if you ever need to. Import and export, the bulk of what you do would be within the list. This is, I'm going to save for later, but you can uh, bring in uh, or use the formatting of another list, or you can bring it in as a CSV. And this is just a matter of between PC and Mac, we now support just a better experience. If, if there's an Excel file in whatever format, it's now a little bit better supported across operating systems. So the other two things really on here are there's a lot of templates. A lot of them are self-explanatory, we hope, in the context of if you're tracking issues, if you're uh, taking travel requests as somebody on behalf of a larger team, if you're planning content, this could be blogs, social, this could be campaigns and different events. There's lots of ways to track information, and these are just quick starts to get you there. In addition, you can see that there's some that are kind of new and coming for the preview that we're running. So if you're used to seeing these templates, you might see a couple new ones. And there are a couple of ones that are specific to Teams. So within Teams, we also took an in industry slant. 
and we had a couple that we created mostly to test out if people were interested in creating an industry specific within teams that was really meant for collaboration. The biggest one was in the healthcare space with patients. So of course you can go in and, and use whatever template you like, change it to whatever you want it or need it to be. But we hope that the templates give you an idea both if you're new to lists, what can I do with them? That's my intent today to kind of hold this up here so you can see, gosh, I can do a lot and track a lot of different type of information with lists. And once you see one or two, you'll get a sense more even, even beyond that. Um, and there are more templates coming. There's even the ability to create your own custom templates. This takes a little bit more work uh, in terms of creating the template itself, but anything you can do in the product, anything we do in our templates, you can effectively do now in a custom template. And that includes being able to have things like custom Power Automate flows. We have them coming soon where you'll go into our uh, work tracker pro uh, template and automatically it'll ask you, do you want to uh, populate this flow with your own unique choices. If you don't, you don't need to use it, but if you do, it's right there within the template. But this is a real powerful way to not only just repeat by using the from existing list, but actually kind of have a stamp of every list that gets created or every type of list. You can have multiple custom templates, use that and, and use it from here. For the end user, they'll just see it. Templates from Microsoft, templates from your organization. So if that orients you around a little bit around what is this thing we call Microsoft Lists, this next couple of steps will will solidify it. So we're going to create an event itinerary list and we're going to do it for Teams Nation and we're going to just add a couple of, of uh, items and then I'll switch over and kind of go into the some already things that are already done. But when you choose the template, you get to see ahead of time what it is you're going to get in this template. You're going to get a session name column, a session code column, a session type. You can change all of this. You can add your descriptions. You don't have to have them right away. This is the kind of collaborative part I will show you about getting a description. But as you scroll left to right, the template gives you an idea of what it is that's already pre-populated from a, a format and a column structure so that you don't have to go and each time create these columns, choose the formatting and all of that. So when I go to use the template, I'm going to type in the name Teams Nation 2022. And we'll choose green and we'll just make a rocket since we're all going to fly through this session and fly through the Teams Nation day. But here is the trivia question. What is missing here? It technically isn't missing because it's by design, but is something that you would normally do when creating a list at this moment. Does anybody already in the chat have a guess? We've already had an answer. Someone got there before you even finished asking. Good, the I figured. I figured. So uh, if the answer was, I don't see where I can choose to put this list, that's exactly. because by design, we are creating uh, the ability when you're in Teams, we know where you're at. There's a Teams team backing up this Teams Nation 2022 channel. And that's this one that I call Next Gen Events. So when I create this list, it's going to create it in the Next Gen Events connected SharePoint site. And we'll get there at the end just to kind of give a proof point of where does this all get stored. Um, but the most interesting thing is that you don't have to make that choice. You, you certainly can create a list elsewhere and bring it in. But if you're doing it natively from the channel within your team, it doesn't ask you that because it's going to put it in the right place especially mapping to all the people that already have access or need access to this list will if they're in that members uh, orientation of the team. So when I click create, you don't need to make that choice. It's just going to create it on the back end in SharePoint. It's going to rename the tab as what I titled it, Teams Nation 2022. Sometimes if that's too long, you can adjust and rename it. It won't affect the name of the list, or you can also add emojis and do whatever you want. So once you have the list, you can effectively do whatever makes sense. Like I did Agenda, M. Cashman, and I shortened these down. And these are all lists, and you can rename them to whatever you want. But if you notice, I have this pre-populated, all these sets of columns. It's kind of blank and maybe a little boring for demo. But as you start to layer in, we're going to add one new uh, title. And I'm going to just pretend that we're just getting started here. So I don't have a final name. We don't have a code from the event, but well, let's just put one in here because uh, that's not part of what I was doing. You'll see here as part of the template, you get these drop downs that are already pre-populated. If this works for what you want and how you like it, great. 
or if you need to adjust it before you add any items, you can adjust any of these things, and I'll show you in a second how to do that. You can recolor them, you can rename them, you can delete some if you don't need them, but it does give you this pre-populated thing. I'm just doing a breakout session, and so that's available there. Description is TBD. We're going to collaborate on that one. I'm going to put myself as a speaker, but certainly you can uh, add anybody or put a placeholder, you know, as somebody who's going to own the session and they're going to assign the speaker. And we'll just put this as what is is today. For me today, we're delivering this at 8 a.m. my time, and we'll finish up at 8.40. And there's one field that gets um, pre-populated here, but we'll just put in uh, the location. And on this one, I'm going to actually type in online because we're doing this online. So you have either the choices that you put in there or if it's something that's being delivered online, or I could add a column that's a link and that's where I'm going to cut over and really show you how I started with this template and then what I did for how I work, which gives you the opportunity to do what you need to do. So no big surprise here. I've saved it down and some of the formatting that was already a part of this template takes hold. You can see that it's a new item. There's some things missing here um, and some of the formatting takes effect. You got the color of this choice field and you've got this capacity. I haven't set what the capacity is yet, <clears throat> but you can do that, especially if there's a room capacity, either by nature of teams, like that would be a thousand people per a team's meeting, or maybe you have a physical room that only holds up to 250 people. So you want to track that and, and maybe that's helpful. Um, but in essence, we've got a couple of things. I'm going to go in and just add another one for variety here. We'll just do uh, Jeff Teeper's keynote. Uh, hopefully everybody had fun with Jeff this morning. Uh, we'll just make this key 01, and because it's a keynote, we're going to choose keynote. Uh, we'll just say Jeff is great. That's my main description for Jeff. We'll add Jeff as a speaker. And then he started a little bit earlier than me. He actually started at 12 a.m., right? And he went to, I think, 12.15. It was just a, a welcome and a hello and some showing off of the new stuff. Uh, and we'll put this one at a thousand because I bet Jeff got good attendance this morning. And this one was also online. And if you notice, because I put it in as a choice and I wasn't blocked from doing that, you can minimize if you want, if you don't want people to add their own things. But I can also choose that he was online and hit save. So that makes it easy. We have two items. And if you can imagine, really, the use of this type of technology is you're tracking more than two things. You're probably tracking a whole lot of things. But I'm going to start to add to this just to show you a little bit more about Microsoft Teams, and then we'll cut back and, and talk a little bit about Teams itself. Um, and then we'll get in into some of the specifics about how working with lists and teams helps you for events. So we've got these two items in here. I want to go in and just make one tweak of what these choices are. I'm going to add another choice. And we'll just put in Mark's choice. And this uh, shows up a little funny right now in Teams, but I'll explain why. So we now have a, a new choice and on the capacity, once this goes away, we'll go in here and we will change a little bit of what the setting is. Whoop. So minimum we'll have is, uh, we'll just put zero and maximum because we're in teams, we'll put a thousand. So when I save this down, And that goes away so you can see it. You will see the data bars, hopefully. I said it right. Oops, sorry. Set it to a thousand. Then you will see, you'll get a sense visually this particular session isn't yet at capacity. This might be more for reporting afterwards, but you can get a sense that you can set those factors for the column, and that might be important for your event, especially if somebody's keeping track of how many people were in the Teams meeting or how many people were in the live after you've uh, kind of counted everybody. So you can do a lot with just formatting and, and getting things across, but let me show you just a little bit around what I'm using in Teams uh, that won't take very long because this is really pretty light on the team stuff. But I wanted to jump over and show you the Teams team that I'm doing this from is just another team that I created. I happen to be the owner of this one, and I did it just like anybody at Microsoft here can do. I went in, created a new team, gave it a name, invited a few people, 
and uh, you know you can imagine how that goes. So I then of course had a general channel which we use pretty lightly just for conversation and for every event that we do and we've done quite a few now we have a specific channel. So in my mind every event that we do is a channel. We've got the Microsoft 365 conference in Vegas that we're supporting so I created a channel. Of course there's the conversations there's the files as they start to come in. There's all the sessions that we're going to do. This is a peek ahead at one of those lists. And uh, for me, I always post in for the people that I'm working with the event website. So there's a lot of things that you can do to bring things that you're working on internally and a lot of things that you can do to bring things in externally. Just to give you another example, I believe I've got a, uh, another example for uh, last Ignite. And this will give you a sense of, uh, sorry, this was not the one. Ignite for Jeff's keynote. That's not the one either. We'll just do Educon. So pretty simple. Uh, it gives me a place to go in and layer in all the different sessions, all the different presenters. And if I'm working with multiple teams, it gives me a way to obviously track and manage that. And it's something that I can then go back to because I have it in one single team. I invite who I need to. If I need to not uninvite people, I can. And effectively, we're just using Teams as Teams is. If we go back to the one that we're working on, adding these different tabs clearly is probably uh, very easy for everybody. But I like to make sure that I've got a couple of things that people can turn to so that they can see what's going on. Um, and one of them is the list itself. So. If I go from the list that we created, which is this uh, simple one, and I start to turn to some of the choices that I've made, I'm going to turn to one that I'm getting ready for, which is coming up in, in April, which is the Microsoft 365 conference. And I've done a couple of things in here, one of which I will show you based on this allocation. So this is a column that I added, and just to show you what it is, it's a pretty simple choice column. And I work with a bunch of different teams. There's the OneDrive SharePoint team, the Viva team, the Teams team, Power Platform, Azure, and then we have a specific track for diversity and inclusion. And they all get their own colors and they all get listed. And because we're working with a third party event team, they told us that we each got 10 sessions. So that's what we have to work with. And so within this column, I also added some smarts around formatting. So if I go into this um, conditional formatting and the different rules that we have. Whoop. I am. There we go. So um, based on the different choices that you choose in the allocation. If I choose OneDrive and SharePoint, then the background is going to turn that entire row into a, um, a green. If I label something as a keynote, it's going to make that entire background yellow. And if it goes through Viva Blue, Teams uh, Purple, and Power Platform will be red and Azure gray. And if I don't choose anything, it'll just be white. Um, but for people who come to this list, then it's a lot easier for them to see. Oh, I can see that this session, and I'll scroll over so you can see which one, is a Viva session. This one is a Power Platform session. I don't have to have this open to see that. Once I start to get to know that, that for me makes it a lot easier. When I start to build out this list initially, I kind of frame it out and put people's uh, different uh, allocations that they have. You'll see in here we've got a couple that are not yet populated, so the Teams team still has three to work with. So this is all I did to start with. I added a couple items for every every team, and I made it sure that they could make it, uh, they could find it a lot easier. So by doing that conditional formatting, anytime anything gets added here, and I choose it, and I'll show you what that looks like for this form. The drop down menu, if I choose uh, not just only the session type, but the allocation. I can choose and make it Teams, and this item when I add it, new for Teams Nation, will just show up even if I don't fill in anything more, and it'll appear and we will see it, uh, I believe, towards the top. And you'll see that it pre-populates uh, the color with just my title. Now, that gets a little boring, 
And so the next thing I wanted to share, share with you is when you start to collaborate with somebody. So if I go in and choose that item and I want to work with uh, one of my peers, I'm going to go into the individual item and click on conversation. Anytime you have a tab, you can show the item or the content and have a conversation side by side. And I'm going to ask uh, Victoria. And you ignore this item it's just a demo and she will get a notification and if you could imagine i can ask some things like add final title uh, can you get final abstract and all the while now she's pulled in and in this it's just adding to the overall conversation within the team so we have a new item and I've started a conversation with Victoria and if I go back to these posts, I can see if I were Victoria, I would have gotten an activity notification. And I can see that Mark is asking to you know, do something here and this is the nice thing from her perspective when Victoria or whomever I at mentioned or if anybody else comes across this when she clicks the list item keeps me in teams. It brings up the conversation and it brings me to that conversation uh, that that list item that I was asking about. So now if I were Victoria, I can come in here and say new for Teams Nation 2022 and we're going to assign the speaker as uh, my friend Chris McNulty. Whoop. I can add as a speaker Chris McNulty. And on and on, I know that this is going to be a workshop. Uh, we're going to put him in room 111 and we don't have a link yet. I'm going to be the owner of this one just so that Chris can follow up with me if he needs to know any logistics. I'm going to ping Chris to get the abstract and uh, we'll leave the rest of this blank except for that this is now currently a draft. So this whole time that I've made these changes, you've seen that the list is now saving it on the back end and if I wanted to add to the conversation, I could certainly do that. Uh, and if, since I changed the, the list item name, uh, it sort of punted me out with the conversation. Um, but now I start to have this collaborative aspect to tracking information. And I did that across a number of different events. I did that with the Teams team and I was working with Caruana and making sure that she had with her speakers and her uh, anybody that's working with her adding their final titles and descriptions. Uh, and there's a lot that you can do around collaborating collaborating uh, by just reaching out on the list itself uh, and asking people like that. But there's also ways to then, of course, have channel meetings. And so for each event that we hold, we have a number of different sessions before the event and we just make them as a, a channel meeting. So if I wanted to schedule a channel meeting, anybody that's now added as a member for this event or already a part of my events team can do that. Let's uh, know before you go. For Teams Nation. And we'll of course have it as optional if I wanted to invite new people. Of course, the uh, members of this team will have this available to them. And I'll save this because this is pretty straightforward. But when I send this, it's going to go to everybody and become a channel meeting within the team. Uh, and the reason that I wanted to show you to, that I do that is once I schedule those meetings and have them, I start to create this know before you go which incorporates both the list, the meeting recording and the PowerPoint that we use just to go over the logistics. So let me show you one more list. I'll show you the no before you go and uh, then uh, maybe pause if there are any questions uh, that we can take just before we move into the to the next section. Um, so this is another event <clears throat> where I used the event itinerary, but then on this one I used everything that I had made changes from a formatting perspective so that I could bring that in and not have to recreate that every time and you know using the template will save you time using the template plus your changes that you made it so that it tracked uniquely new information added formatting or just did any logic especially if you start using rules it'll bring all of that over in the template when you use the smarts of another list and I'm going to show you that next but just to give you another example, this is another event that we're supporting. Same set of people, same way that we work together to gather the information. At some point, of course, we share this with the third party event team so they can publish it onto their public uh, website. But in essence, this is just our place 
to track and manage session title, session abstract, speaker, and once we start to get the information around time and room and code of the information, a code you know for the that's been assigned by the the event team, we start to layer in and track that as you would imagine. So um, let me pause here, Sarah, and just see if there's any questions around creating a list in Teams, starting to format or use it within the context of as a, as a tab in Teams, and just a few examples that I shared. Um, I'm going to bring up the agendas just so people can see where we're going next. Um, but if there were any questions I can take uh, or see in the in the chat, let's take those now. Yeah, we've got a few questions and we've got um, William with his hand up, um, but the questions we're seeing in the chat are all in relation to the um, the um, team, the list being stored in the SharePoint site and being able to use your SharePoint permissions to to work with that and modify the permissions on that. Yeah, let me take it down from the list that I just created for Teams Nation and you'll uh, this will really much show you so I'm outside of Teams just because I went to, to lists home and just to orient you, I have saved lists the app as a progressive web app on my desktop, something you can do in Edge or Chrome. So just to orient you, I'm now out of Teams, I'm in Microsoft Lists, and I'm just gonna go into the list that we just created, which is of course accessible <clears throat> outside of the team for me, but ultimately to the question, it is stored in this next gen events team. So I'm in and now the team site, this list, which we called Teams Nation 2022, is a part of this team site, which happens to be a site that's connected to this team. You can see that here. If I hover over it long enough, you'll see the, the, the group membership card and it gives you kind of the details, but you can see that uh, we're kind of in SharePoint. And it's actually, this site is connected under a hub site. But when I go up to the gear, if you're familiar with SharePoint, you can go into the site contents page. And this shows you everything that's within this container, everything effectively that is stored in SharePoint. And it's this team site specifically. So if we scroll through, we should find the list that I just created, which is that Teams Nation 2022. And here it is. This is what it looks like. There's two suit, the same two items in the Chrome of this team site within this hub site. Abstracted away is just the list with inside Microsoft Lists but it is pointing to effectively the lists app to that SharePoint site to then show it in this cleaner fashion, which is a lot of the work that we did within the last two years to bring these through. So technically stored in SharePoint, go back to the site contents page. Every list that I've showed you so far is a part of this team set site because it's the ones that I've created within the next gen events team site. And that's part of when I was doing it from Teams and I created it from here. Um, that's the part that it didn't ask me because it already knows that they're connected. So I hope that answers the question. And if anything, it's just the proof point of this is technically where it's stored right alongside the documents that we have for next gen events, right alongside all the pages for news. If you go to the home space, all these things that I publish per event, <clears throat> these are all just within the same container and a list is just another object within SharePoint. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> William, I think you can come off mute if you've got a, a short question, otherwise we'll hold it to the end. Yeah, it's actually really short. Hey Mark, Andy yeah. here, how hi, are you? Hi Andy, I'm very good, how are you? Good, enjoying all of the list innovation here. Um, just a quick question, and this is just something I kind of noticed in the Teams user interface, and um, mm -hmm. it piggybacks on what you were just talking about. So you're here in a Teams channel and you've got the Microsoft list tabbed in here, but in the upper right hand corner where the meet button is, there's yep. no bubble to tie back to the post tab uh, in the channel. But if I bring the list in as a SharePoint list and tab it in, it gives me that little chat bubble to be able to tie back to the post tab in the. Um, Interesting. Let yeah, me, let me I, I wonder if that was just an oversight or. You know, you know I've, ne I've I've never noticed that and I, I can't think off the top of my head of uh, sorry, it's already there. Let's do another one. Ah, yeah, right here. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do know the reasoning behind it. Um, OK, and and part of it is what I, I actually forgot to explain. So let me let me get into it. So if I go in to an individual item. Uh, and if you see here, this is just giving you the option to show the conversation. 
the team is starting to wire it up a little bit more closely to the list item itself. So that used to be at the initial onset was you could do a chat bubble for the entire list. And they actually had a, a, a number of issues with that. So they went to only right now focus on the individual conversation per list item. And I think this might be a little left over from that lists component with inside the SharePoint app that puts it up here. Because if I go in the list and that was a great, great call out from a visual perspective that you saw it. And again, a reminder to me that I forgot to mention this aspect um, was one of the things that can be a little confusing. So to start a conversation like I showed you per a list item is what's enabled. So that's if you want to keep the conversation in teams and you saw when I posted the conversation that we went in and it just becomes a part of the team's conversation. That's this uh, thread here. But if I go back to the list and I want to actually add this as a comment per an individual item, the difference here is when I add this comment, I can have the same effect of communicating with somebody and I wish I could add mention you, Andy, but I'll just do Chris here. So if I wanted to have a conversation with Chris, he might be working inside the SharePoint realm on this same list. I'd like to invite him into this team space so we can do it in a way that we're really trying to build out the experience. But because we have this comments feature and we know a lot of lists live outside of teams, uh, we're seeing a lot of traction for people building and using teams, uh, lists in teams. But we know back to this fact, if I go in to the same list and uh, we'll just go uh, back to the site contents page and choose any list. Here, when I go into, uh, let's go into this upcoming event, I don't have the option to do a conversation in Teams. And I'll say that with a caveat of, I know the team is working on doing a kind of a share to uh, from here to Teams. Uh, you might've seen that. But if I go in here, I do have the ability to work with comments. And if I had added that comment with Chris here, that comment lives with the list itself, whether I'm in SharePoint, whether I'm in through the list app itself, or if I'm in Teams. So uh, the way that I kind of hopefully add a little less confusion with the last statement is comments live with the list and they're bound to the boundaries of the list itself. <clears throat> if this list was added into a space where their permissions were different and that wasn't you know, uh, on purpose, then somebody wouldn't be able to see the comments if they didn't have access to the list. By default, the conversation is open to every member and owner of a team. The comment itself is more bound to the permissions of the SharePoint site. We've done a lot of work to make sure those are the same thing, but because old SharePoint uh, content, which is super valuable still, may not yet be connected to a team and it may not yet be uh, rectified on those permissions across the list itself and the use of the team before the list came into that team. Um, I know that gets confusing, but we do still have both because we know there are a lot of people still outside of teams and great eye, but I believe it was there because we started with having a comment on just the list itself, but now we only have the ability to add a comment per list item. Appreciate you diving into that. Uh, you know, it's kind of perplexing just to kind of see it there, but it, it makes sense yeah. whenever you say tying the comments to the list and traveling with it. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Great yeah, stuff. You're welcome. Thanks for question and thanks for thanks for joining. Um, so I know uh, we're a little short on time and the two last things I wanted to talk about uh, just to kind of throw up here where we're going is to really talk about this know before you go page and how a list can really be brought into a SharePoint page in the context of your team and then the making the noise. This will be my last demo, which is a really simple one, which is how to reuse it for your next event uh, and to get the benefits of the changes that you've made. So the know before you go is pretty straightforward. It is a SharePoint page. You design and build this inside of SharePoint. Uh, I can take us out and over to SharePoint so you can see what this list, uh, this page looks like. So it's just a page in SharePoint within this same container. <clears throat> but here obviously kind of abstracts it away. And on this, I've added our Know Before You Go deck, which is using PowerPoint Live to obviously hold this information. Anybody who comes to this page can go full screen and you know view the PowerPoint. They can play the video of our last meeting or series of meetings. And this is just using the, the stream technology. But down below, I also always put beyond quick links and some helpful information, the list itself. So I don't have to ask them to go to the different tabs, know before you go, little context. And then of course they can scroll down and use the list just as you would expect. If they wanted to 
filter down by just workshops. They can do that and they can see that we've got a number of workshops that we're doing. If they want to undo that filter and or add to it to see what the keynote was. It's just a working list in the ways that they can navigate. They can click into it and they can find out a lot more about what it is that they're getting themselves into. It's the know before you go. And I think it's just a nice best practice that somebody shared with me is to put it all on one page instead of across multiple tabs, especially because then I can <clears throat> share this as a link and say, hey, everything you need is right here. Just go to this tab or click this link to learn more. And I can do that in a chat. I can do that in an email. I can send it as a one on one chat for anybody that asks me. And again, it's just a really nice consolidated way to get information. And if I show you now that we can edit a page in Teams, you'll just see I made some simple choices with the text web part, a quick links web part, scroll down to a file viewer web part, another file view web part. If you're used to this being stream, it's kind of the same now. You use the file viewer web part with your video. And then down here, I just use the list web part. And it is just that I add the list web part. I'll do it here real quickly and we'll add the new one. Type in list to find it. Oops, just list. And when I do that, it's going to prompt me which list do you want to add? And we're going to add our really short one that we just added to Teams Nation. And it does just that. It brings it in. And now I have a list on a SharePoint page that I now can then publish or republish. And it's now available to everybody. And then the kind of magic is even though I did that in uh, Teams, if I scroll to the bottom of this, you'll notice it's not here. But if I hit refresh, of course, it's just SharePoint page on the back end. And if I scroll down, you'll see that we've got our new list. There it is. So it's all live, it's all connected, and it's also just a really nice way to next time you do this, this is another little trick. Just come and copy this page and everything will be laid out just like you like it. Then you make the changes that you want. Give it a different title to Teams Nation and you automatically have a no before you go for the next event. Save yourself a little bit of time once you do it once. And with that same theory, the other thing that I wanted to show you back in the list itself is if I want to go in and create another list. Uh, and this time I'm going to go in and create it just as a, a Teams Nation number two. This is using the smarts that we built into these two lists that I showed you. I'm going to go create a list, but this time instead of using the template, I'm going to go create a list from an existing list. And this gives me an enumeration of all the lists that I have access to. And once it loads here, I'll be able to choose the team and then choose the list that I want to replicate. And uh, hopefully this doesn't take too long to load here. If it does, we'll go in and we'll do it from the SharePoint side, see if that helps us any. There it is. So I just need to find my next gen events list, which is right here at the top. And I'll go in and I'm going to choose the Microsoft 365 Conference Vegas, which is coming up in April and click next. And so what the system is doing, it's saying, OK, Mark is doing a new list. He's got to give it a new title. We'll do this 2023 just to get ready for next year. And we'll do this one blue and we'll do this one because maybe this will be Teams Nation in person. Crazy. So again, creating it is going to just do what it is that it's it's going to be connected to. I get a new tab, a new name, a new blank list, but this time it already has the smarts that carried over from these choices that I made. And I'll show you what I mean. And we'll just use uh, Andy here as my example. Uh, sorry, Andy, misspelling your name. Uh, I can't add you here as a speaker, so I'm going to be your uh, puppet speaker. You tell me what to say. We're going to make this a uh, keynote because Andy's going to do a keynote and just we'll add uh, two more things so that it shows up. He's going to be talking about teams and we are going to make this a draft and we will save it down. And the smarts of what I put in here because I chose it as a keynote, even though he's talking about teams, it made it yellow because everything that's listed as a keynote is yellow. I'll do another quick add. And we'll make just myself the speaker. Make a different choice around session type and we will make this coming from the Viva team and this is also in draft. And if you notice it brings in the color choices that I made. The choice fields look great. The rows are now colored the way that I want them to and as I add more and more and different teams start to pile on, we'll start to see obviously the different colors and it just helps us visually uh, you know, orient on what's what. 
But I did that because I used the smarts of another list. Saves me a ton of time. Actually leverages the template that I originally used, the event itinerary template, but that I've been that I've customized in a unique way. And that's a great great feature to be able to replicate a lot of those choices that you made. Um, the last thing that I want to share is then making noise about it. Uh, it really is up to you on how you do this. I was just going to show you two examples. One is at some point I handed this off to somebody to help me create a blog. So I kind of drafted and wrote a, a number of things for this particular blog for the tech community. But if you notice here, here are all of our sessions and all I did was I exported it as a Excel spreadsheet to an external person who helped me just jot this down into a Word document and they had all the final titles, all the final speakers, and all the final codes. And that's pretty straightforward. We all know about blogging, but if you're doing something internal, that's where it gets fun. This is more post event, but I had also created for some training that we did an internal page. This is just using a SharePoint page. I renamed it just to say on demand, but if you wanted to click in to see it in SharePoint, it has kind of a broad header with some of the different sessions that we held. Before the event, it was all about what sessions you can attend with some content here. Um, but I created a page. I laid it out the way that I thought would be easiest for people to see what sessions were throughout the day. And in an on-demand world, all these sessions were recorded through Teams and brought here in a simple fashion. The title is already a part of the video presented by, I used a people web part so people could learn more about Randy. They could reach out to him and contact him. And you see it's just a SharePoint page with a nice way to reach out to people. And I just joined one of these internally that somebody else managed <clears throat> for product management. And they did just that. They had these sessions that you could attend once they were available on demand. They made this page and converted it to have those videos on them. Um, one other little thing, it's gonna be the last thing that I end on is this page also is aware within the Viva Topics context and just kind of fun to land on the Microsoft lists topic with inside the Microsoft tenant gives you a little bit of, of uh, behind the scenes. One of the things that's kind of fun is the original project name to Microsoft list, which is the last trivia I'll leave you with was called Project Savannah. And that was two years ago before we launched Microsoft lists. And even inside of this experience of using lists plus Microsoft Teams, there's lots of ways to bring in additional information via PowerPoint, via video, via links, or by using something like Viva Topics to bring in information about your project, about your event, whatever it is that you wanted to share. Um, but a list a little trivia here to leave you with Project Savannah uh, uh, was the code name. So um, with that, I'm at the end of time, I know. And just from an agenda perspective, I hope you saw a lot of the ways that Microsoft List comes together with Microsoft Teams. Uh, a couple of foibles through my demo, but I hope you got a sense of it's really easy to create a list. It's really easy to bring people in to collaborate with them. And then if you're one of the owners, it's really easy to then share that out, especially when uh, if people ask you the question, what sessions are we running at the Microsoft 365 conference? Well, I can tell you, here's the list. Let me know if you have any questions and you're out. It's a really nice, easy way to add mention or send it as a link to somebody. And it's a breath of fresh air to be able to manage this, especially when it's more than just one person. On this particular list, we had about 10 people initially drop in all their content. And then we had about 45 people that were refining it and working out the finer details. So just one example, and I hope you see and try the list app in Teams. Um, but with that, at time, Sarah, if there are any questions I can, I can answer, I'll certainly do that in, in chat even after we end. But if there's anything uh, that you want to use to close out, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I've got a couple of ones that are really quick questions. You've got more mm -hmm. templates than we have. We're jealous. Are there more coming? Uh -huh. Yeah, they are multiplying. Uh, and we had a little teaser. We're doing uh, what is called the Microsoft uh, uh, account preview, which means uh, there is a consumer version of Microsoft Teams. And uh, I'll bring that up just for fun. If I bring out uh, not Office Mark, if you go to lists.live.com, and I'll encourage you to do this because we'd love for you to do that. I already have done this so I can sign in. These are just some fun lists that I've created for the Microsoft account, which is effectively my consumer one. I'll show you this, this is the fun one that I created, but then to answer your question, I went in and created one for Batman. The, the funnest one to show you is poster art, but I was able to do this because uh, of my Microsoft account, I'll go back to the list itself and kind of create a new item. It's also missing for me here, but internally, 
because I know they're coming. If you go into new lists, we are uh, sorry, it's not showing up here. It is showing up in Teams. Uh, they have just started to turn it on in Teams. Um, but good eye, like Andy, uh, these are the <laughs> standard templates that are everywhere now. These are yep. the three new templates that are coming because of the consumer space. We're just testing them internally, but that's for playlists, for music, books, movies, gift ideas. If you are a manager of people in a small business and you want to track the gifts for Christmas time, if you're a parent and you want to track gifts for your daughter or son, if you're a great friend and you're building out for all of your peers and friends, the gift idea is one of the number one things that we've been asked to build based on the start of this preview. And then there's the expense tracker because these are not only for consumer. We think this is also going to be a useful one to track receipts. Uh, we're also working on one for recipes, uh, and we hope that our, we're going to enable the, the community as well. Um, just to wrap here, there's also a couple that are just in teams right now, and that's also something we're testing. We're not convicted on that they are only in teams, but right now they are. But these are, uh, like I mentioned earlier, industry specific. So that was one slant when we were working with the Teams team to integrate the Lists app. They volunteered some resources to create some unique templates and they wanted them to be industry specific. And for a while they wanted to, them to be Teams only. Once you create them in Teams, of course you can access them in SharePoint because it's just a list that gets created in SharePoint no matter what anybody does template wise. Um, but you can see here they're kind of specific to a couple of industries or a little agnostic when it comes to incidents but they were built with that intent to be able to speak more directly to manufacturing, healthcare, or the financial. Um, but good eye, it is not our intent to have the Delta for long-term, um, but some of these uh, are, are a little bit more in testing for the preview, and some of them right now are, are just in Teams. Um, but once you create them, you can use and access them anywhere if that's your choice. But great yeah, question, great eye. I did notice you're you're also running a nice early ring of teams. So I spotted a couple mm -hmm. of things, but I'm not going to say anything. No, no, there's. Um, I I don't think I've I've exposed too much, but no, no, I hope you didn't. can see. I I use Teams a lot, and uh, we've got all the fun bells and whistles with Viva. You've heard all about that today, but um, with yeah. lists, I've pretty much shown you. I think everything that's coming slash already available. So yeah, no, I th I think you're safe. Um, <laughs> one final question. Um. Mm -hmm. With regard to the view that we see for lists in Teams, it's just the default view that's set on the list, isn't it? So if we change the default view on the list, it will change the view that is shown in Teams. That is correct. Yep, it'll re it'll respond to what you've set as the default, which is exactly what I did so that I could show you this agenda in gallery view. The original view of this list before I chose gallery as the default was, as you would expect, just a list. And this was a little boring to show you. I used the order column so I could get it showing up in the right order. But in the gallery view, I, of course, didn't, didn't use that. But I did set it as the default. I did it in Teams, but you could do it in SharePoint, and it will respect that default view. If you have multiple views, and I can't remember if there's a, a number of multiple views here, uh, yeah, there's a couple. So if you build them out, they will plumb through. So you have the ability to use views, of course. And this one is one that we created so that it would just show just the Microsoft Viva sessions. Uh, and that one, uh, sorry, this was um, uh, that particular view was not the one. Viva content is the one that I adjusted properly. Um, and the other thing to show you, which is kind of new, that just popped up in that last thing that I did and now, is if you notice, we've got these little filter tabs. So mm -hmm. those show up and those are just starting to roll out. Um, we call them filter pills or filter tabs, you know, ways to filter down. But because I chose a view and of course then filtered by Viva, it shows up, but I can also unfilter without changing the view. So now it's showing me all content Viva plus um, plus. But that's a nice new feature where they're showing you that's coming through Teams as well. Um, the one caveat I'll just share, just if we're going to if we're going to do, do the sharing, is the views that we've been talking about. I'll go back to my fun Batman list here. If I go into the different views that I've created for each of the different characters, they now show up as tabs. And that's something mm -hmm. that we got a lot of feedback that the way that views are now, they're kind of hidden in the drop down menu. And for as much as your resolution of your screen will show you as many views are as available. And so, of course, you can now see that the views are showing as tabs, and this will also come through into Teams uh, once we get there. Right now, it's only in the preview, but what our intent is to bring this also in, uh, you know, to show you um, uh, to have this experience everywhere. 
Brilliant. I'm going to have to cut us short. I think we could yep. all talk forever, but thank you very, very much. Absolutely um, welcome.